Welcome back to another episode. So I am joined today by the beautiful Beau Raymond. Originally from Too Hot to Handle, she was the winner a couple of years ago and now a mummy influencer who has the most amazing journey and story to share with you all today. Bo, welcome to the podcast. Thank you. Lovely to be here. <laughs> so good to have you. So Bo, tell us a little bit about just what's been going on with you recently and you know just this massive transition into motherhood. What yeah. changed? Uh, it is. It is a massive change and I'm still getting used to things. I mean, yeah. Being a mum, I didn't expect to be a mum so quickly. I mean, I'm 26, but I think it's a perfect age, really, to have a baby as well. I feel like I'm settled. My party life is, like, behind me now. So, <laughs> I mean, maybe I'll say that now, but we'll give it a couple of weeks. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> um, but yeah, I started off with Two Hearts Handle, and even that was out of my comfort zone. I didn't expect to go on there. I was literally, during COVID as well, yeah. I had someone approach me, and it was really weird because I just thought to myself, oh, I'd never go on TV, but I actually thought, do you know what? I'm sitting indoors in COVID times. What have I got to lose? Yeah. So, yeah, I'd done that. And do you know what? The confidence boost it gave me was brilliant. It was so good. And everything after that as well, I mean, that's where I am now I've got my huge following from too hot so yeah. yeah it was it was really really good but like you said the whole transition now I'm now a mummy um to my little Lilia my little Lilia Lewis she's literally beautiful I'm so obsessed I mean can you tell I'm obsessed I've got a necklace with her name I've got my now I've even got an L on my now Aww. like I've got a bracelet with L on I'm just totally in awe of her Aww. um so yeah I'm transitioning to mummy now so it just feels really weird I mean everyone's saying you're so natural you you're coming so natural to it but I still feel like I'm learning something new every single day yeah so yeah. It, it is just crazy but I'm obsessed with motherhood now so I bet you are and you know you know what you're you're right though you will learn something new every day my eldest is 13 and a half I'm still learning something new every <laughs> single day believe me so yeah it, uh, it is that journey of of learning but actually that's you know it's quite a whirlwind in like you say two and a half years from there to now in, into motherhood at, at 26 and it's it's a lot it's a lot to um it's a lot of stuff from yeah exactly and where I'm still so I'm going back to like the influencer fashion life yeah. as well so I'm trying to like multitask the both so I can do both it's not yeah, just oh I don't have to just be a mum now and just do that so I can always do content with Lilia and yeah. yeah do my fashion as well which is really really fun so yeah I'm not restricted to one thing but I'm trying to juggle the both <laughs> exactly like you say she can be part of that with you and yeah exactly. you know, that's who you are and, and now as a mum and you know your audience will really enjoy seeing that and how how you evolve um yeah. and I bet you'll have people who can relate to that too um yeah. we've been through similar yeah. things so yeah um, do you know what I've done um like a lot of Q&A's and stuff and I was yeah. doing it when I was pregnant as well yeah asking people what their birth is like etc yeah. and I feel like they people set out a birthing plan and it never goes to plan. Okay. I don't know hardly any girls that have had a birthing plan and it goes straight out the window. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm quite yeah. glad in a sense I didn't make one up and I didn't get my head into such of one because mm -hmm. even my one of my midwives said she was like, people come in with like laminated forms and things, like how set out they want to be. And I'm just like, how? Like, I didn't think about birth until it was happening. Yeah. Like, I did not think about, I wasn't scared, anything. And then all of a sudden, I started getting my contractions. And I was like, right, she's coming. <laughs> it's just scary. It's probably the best way, though, because I think having a, you know, you can have a loose idea of like, yeah. okay, I'd rather it was in water or I would rather, you know, yeah. you can have those kinds of ideals. But I, I agree with you. And actually, it's a really good message to get across is that, you know, having a, a loose idea is fine, but don't be too hung up on the precision because yeah exactly of because all kinds of things I had, happen i had a preference of having a water birth like i'd say oh no, yeah love a water birth all chilled your own room yeah and then i ended up being induced a week early so that was because of reduced movement so wow. that scared me a lot but yeah. it was like i went in there and i said i had reduced movement so i was about yeah i think i was just below 39 weeks and she said oh do you want to come through now then and we can start inducing you and i was like what I was like, I haven't got anything with me. She was like, right, go home, go and get your stuff and then come back and we'll start inducing you. And I was like, oh my God, that, it feels so real now. Like she's basically saying we're going to drag the baby out, basically. We're yeah. going to the baby come. So I was like, oh my God, like 
it got so real from then. And I, like, I remember just driving back in my car and I started crying. So I was like, I'm going to be a mum. Like, I'm going to have a daughter. It's going to feel so weird. And I don't know what's going to happen from now on. So, yeah, it was really strange. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I think that, yeah, you, you, that's it. The twists and the turns. And I, yeah. I can relate to that too. And with my first, I was water birth hypnobirthing all nice and chilled everything yeah. seems so then and for me it wasn't an early thing it was a late thing and and my eldest actually was stuck and so that led to complications oh, in actually getting him out um it's so and so surprising isn't it and it really is it does. It, it's not straightforward and I I often like describe I think what what is a smooth birth really because there are so <laughs> many twists and turns and I think I think it's good to talk about that and it's good for people to be prepared that, you know, things happen, but as long as you have good care around you and and you, you know, you trust the process. You need the right people around you. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Easy. It's hard. And some of my friends have had the best births ever. And then Mm. mine have had traumatizing ones. So you do, you just get the wrong end of the stick sometimes. And unfortunately that's just the way it goes. But I think people do need to be aware that, it is scary. It's not, it's not an easy thing giving birth. It's, it's not. Huge. And my mum did prepare me for that. She was like, Bo, it's painful. And I was like, oh, my pain threshold's so good. Blah, blah, blah. And she was like, no, Bo, like, this pain is lethal. Like, she, so she did sort of make me aware as well. Yeah. She didn't say, yeah. oh, it's going to be fine. But, yeah, to be fair, when I, I remember when I first got induced, the midwife was saying to me, your pain threshold is actually quite good. So yeah. I'm still keeping that one myself. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> definitely. But like you say, yeah, it's something I don't think anyone can tell us and, until we actually go through it like really what it's like and, and it. yours, different. your story's got some you had some interesting twists and turns with that as well didn't you and yeah you want to talk a bit about that? yeah so I mean I always say that Lilia is my first and last um <laughs> my birth was not easy and you I mean one I and done <laughs> I'm one and done now absolutely um but to be fair, I didn't have the easiest pregnancy as well. I remember for the first month, um, we was going through times when I was bleeding quite a lot. So we was up and down the hospital. We had someone say to us, you need to wait a couple of weeks. So I don't think there's going to be a heartbeat. So we had that scare. And then a few months later, we had quite an early scan. I think it was about 17 weeks. They spotted that Lilia may have had a spina bifida. And obviously that scared us completely. Mm. It's not a nice thing to hear when you're pregnant um and we had to wait a month for those results so waiting a month four weeks four long weeks yeah, to hear whether like my baby time. had spina bifida honestly it was the worst thing because they was telling me different things as well they were saying we can do operations we can do operation while baby is in you and my head was just spinning mm. with all this information and I was thinking how the hell am I going to go through this so yeah that was awful and then we got to the four weeks and everything looked fine I think it was just like the fluid on the top of her spine that I was worried about mm-hmm. Um, but that was all fine, so I was so thankful and grateful for that. Um, what else did we have? Um, so, yeah, and then that obviously led on to my reduced movements. I was getting reduced movement quite a lot, um, hence why they said to us, right, we're going to induce you at 39 weeks, which I was pleased about, but in a sense I've had people say to us, oh, there's it's so long, apparently like four days, something like that. And to be fair, I was induced and it was ended up being about three days I was induced for. I went in on the Wednesday and had her on the, about the Friday night, Friday morning. So, start off, my birth story is so long. So, went in and, like I said earlier, they said that they was going to induce me. I went home, got all my stuff, prepared myself mentally as well. And, yeah, my, my other half came up with me as well. And then he, I think he was getting in a bit of a well state as well because he was just a bit like, oh, crap, she's coming now, so I'm going to be a dad as well. So the same position as me, it was scary. Um, so, yeah, anyway, I went in and I started off um, with just gas and air. I, was, I said to myself, if I can do it natural as possible, I will. I'll take pain. I feel like that is part of giving birth. You do take the pain to get something out of it as well. I feel like it's, it's a nice thing. You feel proud of yourself. So I thought, I'll do it all gas and air. Started off gas and air. Um, so that, what did they do to that first? I think they gave me like a pessary. Mm-hmm. They gave me a pessary to start off with. Yeah. But so that really kick-started the hormones. And yeah. The contractions really, really started. Yeah. But it was like, I was taking it very, very well. And even the midwife was saying, oh, if you go do this, you're a Brit. Like, you're going through it a breeze. So. Yeah. 
yeah, I was going through contractions and they started getting worse and worse and worse. And I felt like I was doing it really well. I've even got filming of me doing the gas there. Like, yeah. <laughs> my other half was filming everything. So, yeah, went through. And then I'm sure that we started off pethidine because pethidine, it really started to kick in my contractions. So I said, start off with pethidine. And that was actually fine. So I had that and it eased off the pain it had. Mm. So, yeah, it started off with pethidine. Yeah. And I was absolutely fine with pethidine. A lot of people have said that they had really bad experiences with that as well. My mum, she had a really bad reaction to it. She started hallucinating and stuff. So even taking that pethidine, I was a little bit cautious with that. Yeah. So I was fine with that. And all of a sudden, my pain just started getting worse and worse. And then, obviously, they were checking how dilated I was. And then all of a sudden, they was like, right, I think we can start pushing. So I've started to push. And to be fair, I was pushing for so long. And I was so adamant that I wanted to get her out. And I was trying with my all, but she just wasn't coming out. It was like the, the bump they were saying that she just wasn't going over. Mm-hmm. So in the end, decided to give an epidural. And nurse has come in to my epidural roll and apparently I was leaning over so I'm so vague. I had to ask my mum this morning fully mm. what happened because I feel like I haven't really thought about it over yeah. and over. Because so I feel blur. like Yeah, it is. It goes into a huge blur. Those three yeah. days I feel like just went. Yeah. So apparently I was crouched over um and I've had an epidural well, like a spinal block before. So if people have gone into my spine before. So I had to have a cervix stitch. Oh, I forgot about that. So yeah, I had a cervix stitch when I was about I think they caught me quite early, about twenty two weeks, because my cervix was really, really short and it went short over a period of a weekend as well. Mm-hmm. So they done a spinal block for my cervix cervix stitch and that wasn't really painful they they numbed you and then it literally just goes in so that was absolutely fine I had no complications with that and if anything the cervix stitch I'd say to people get it if they say that you need it don't be scared about it I highly recommend it because that cervix stitch is what holds baby in and if that is so short Mm. then obviously you, you you get a nasty outcome and I know a lot of girls that have had miscarriages and stuff because of their cervix being so short so I feel Mm. like people need to be made aware that cervix stitch is so helpful so I was very glad I had that yeah so I had a spinal block with that and that was absolutely fine when I got that taken out as well I got it taken out at about I think it's 34 weeks they take it out so that's when baby's safe and she's able to come without no complications basically and being premature yeah so that was taken out and I had no pain after that either which was fine and so yeah going back to my birth I had the epidural and apparently my mum said I screamed and she said that pain was not normal for you because I was in pain already and like everyone was saying my pain threshold was so yeah. good yeah so my mum was like oh my god she's in pain and then my mum started getting into a bit of a state and all of a sudden the nurse my mum asked the nurse and she said what's happened why is she in so much pain she said right I'm going to come around in a minute and tell Bo like what's happened I obviously didn't hear none of this I was in absolute agony Mm. I can't even explain to you the feeling of that pain um but yes she the the anaesthetist come around to me and she said right what I've what I've done I've actually so you have your spine and then another line next to it so basically you can either do a spinal block or an epidural yeah she's ended up going into the middle of those and Mm. doing like a dural puncture so she's done it wrong basically she's gone in the wrong place so my mum's obviously started freaking out and they tried to recorrect it. Um, they gave me something, I, don't, I can't remember what it was, but my blood pressure went so low, I was unresponsive. Um, I remember my mum and my other half like, shaking me, like my eyes were rolling to the back of my head apparently. I don't remember any of this, like this was a total blur to me. Um, so my mum obviously started getting into such a panic yeah. uh, where I was unresponsive and then Lilia's heart rate really, really dropped quite mm-hmm. rapidly. So, and then they gave me something else, injected me something else, which raised my blood pressure. Mm-hmm. And then I started to come back around and then I was like, right, we're going to recorrect the epidural. I was like, right, okay. So they've gone in again 
and this epidural's gone wrong again and it's ended up um, basically numbing me all down but the pain was radiating to my left hip so every time I was getting that contraction I was getting it in my left side and as mums all know the contraction pain is the worst but getting it in that one place I think I'd rather it all over yeah no but getting it in that one place when the contraction was coming I was just trying to like trying to ease it but there was no easing it and they was making me push as well so throughout all of these contractions I was trying to push and push and push so I was pushing for a good good few hours yeah um and then all of this stuff going wrong as well. And I was just like, I give up. Like, I Honestly, I was literally saying to them, just give me a C-section, just rip yeah. her. I was yeah, saying yeah. anything. Just take this baby it. out. Like, yeah. They wasn't believing me that she wasn't coming out. Like I'd pushed mm. for so long. Yeah. And they kept telling me to push and push and push. And I've, like, I've literally had everything. I've had pethidine, I've had gas and air, I've had two epidurals now. Like It's an absolute joke. Like, mm. And they just was not believing me. So I think it got to early hours. Wednesday morning, Friday morning, um, or, yeah, Friday morning, and I was literally saying to them, I have nothing left in me, I cannot do it, like, I felt so ill. Mm. So, and then they decided to give me, so go into my spine a third time and give me a spinal block. Mm-hmm. So, this eventually worked, yeah. so I was numb from obviously the waist down, and they tried, went into theatre, they was going to try and get her out with a suction cup, Mm-hmm. so tried to go in but doing this she wouldn't come out there was no room so they had to cut to me I think it's called an ep- episode to me mm-hmm. they, cut yeah. off, they cut off to the left of me mm-hmm. so not down they cut off to the left of me mm-hmm. and then they got her out with forceps mm-hmm. and that was awful because when she came out she had where the suction cup is obviously they've tried so hard yeah her head just looked awful bless her it was really yeah. really hard um and then they come out with this forceps and then she had a big mark across her face where the forceps have obviously grabbed her so that was awful but i've actually got a film and you know i watch it near enough every week because it just reminds me how special she is and she came out and i've got a film of her like just here put onto my chest and it's just the best thing ever but magical yeah all of that i mean that was traumatizing it does make you think i don't think I could go through it again I really don't like the, the, mum say you do forget about you do time, it's amazing but... how you forget but yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Um, it's yeah. actually so fascinating listening to you um because there are aspects of that that I can relate to um, really? with my two actually and what you've described there's a bit of a combination of the two that I uh, you know two very different births but different complications and um the first one was stuck the second one was really really late and just wasn't budging and the induction and all of these things and I I uh, really feel like I had a I had an emergency spinal with the first and uh I ended up having an epidural with the second, very different experiences. But when you said about that, you know, they got it, they got it in the wrong place. And then even then when they did do it, it, things weren't right. And these are all things that I think as when we're in labor or we're having a baby, we are so vulnerable where you can't control anything and you're literally at the mercy of those around you, aren't you? And it's, um, It's, it's so hard because mm. when I was under pethidine, the so when they come round for a con, with a consent form mm. to give you the epidural, yeah, you your head on pethidine, so you don't know what you want and what you what you should have. And this is what I was saying. So what should I have? I don't know what to have. I've had this and this and this. So yeah. what do I do now? What is the outcome? What should I do? You can't make a sound. And mind yeah, you decision, can't can you? really. It's like you're talking to thin air. Like how how are you meant to know what to have to get this baby out? So yeah. I think girls need to really be aware yeah. of the side effects of an epidural. I mean, I thought, yeah. oh, yeah, I'd have a epidural. That's absolutely fine. I won't feel nothing. Mm. But it's the aftermath as well. So I was in agony. I couldn't really look after Lilia for about a week and a half. We mm. was in the hospital for two weeks, yeah, um, which was awful, like staring at the same four walls and just not being able to look after my daughter how I should have been, not yeah. able to feed her. So... I was literally stiff from my neck to, I'd say, about the middle of my spine down. Mm. Could hardly turn my head. Like, the pain of it was awful. When when I literally thought that that pain was going to be over, as soon as she was out, I thought, right, that's it. A couple of days, I'll probably be able to go home. And what, Why was that, do you think? Was it to do with what went so wrong slightly? The, yeah, so this yeah. was the aftermath of the dual puncture that puncture. I had. 
Um, and even after all of this, I still had to undergo theatre and go in my spine again. I had what they call is a blood patch. Right. Basically, they take blood from your arm mm. and then they put it into your spine. So basically, the dural puncture is you've got your spine and when they're going wrong, it makes like a hole, as you will. Mm-hmm. And gradually over time, blood ends up filling that hole yep. to end up mending your spine again and stop you from getting like the stiffness and the headaches. Yeah. Like the fluid around your brain that it affects. So it's yeah. actually initially it's really dangerous when you speak about it, like affecting yeah. stuff. Yeah. So they take blood from your arm, um, put it into your spine, and initially they say the first one might not work. But the surgeon said to me, "Oh yes, it should work. Like you shouldn't have no complications." My first blood blood patch did not work, and if anything, made me worse. So I had that over, I think it was over about four days after I was there, four or five days. Yeah. Had that, and I was speaking about another, um, having a second blood patch. And I was like, well, what if this doesn't work? And obviously, going into your spine, there's always complications that of, um, of being paralysed and things like that. So all of that was going through my head, and I was just petrified. Mm. And then I'd say a couple of days later, Lilia was in her Moses basket and the nurse come in and she could obviously see she she was sick a little bit and I said oh was she like I'm sure I didn't hear anything anyways they've picked her blanket up and the vomit was like a luminous green so the nurse was like oh my god that's really not right so obviously I started to panic she was like right we're gonna call the baby doctor just to have a look it should be fine anyway baby doctors come down and they've taken her to go and get examined. She said, oh, I just want to go and have a look. And I was like, oh, brilliant. And so I was thinking, my baby's gone now. Where is she? Like, she... And then the nurse came back without Liliana. I was like, where is she? She was like, so we've had to keep her in. Um, and them speaking to me about the green fluid. It's like infection. Or it could be one of her intestines that are twisted or a blockage that they was worried about. So then I was having all this whilst I was literally laid up in bed. You were trying to recover. Not, yeah. yeah, trying to recover myself. And then my daughter was going through that. So I feel like I just shoved myself way to the side. And I was like, right, where is she? I want to go see her. So she was kept into the baby unit for about a day. And then she got transferred to King's College Hospital. Um, And then she was there for about two days. So she was away from me for two days, which I cannot even explain to you the Mm. feeling when you're a new mum, your baby being taken away from you. It was the worst Mm. thing ever. Yeah. So that was awful for me. So my other half, shall I say, my ex at the time, he was there with her and he was having to give me updates because they said to me, basically, if I discharged myself then from the hospital that I was in, you wouldn't get the care that you need. And if you need another blood patch, you won't get it because you'll basically have to go through A&E again, which is ridiculous. So I yes. couldn't discharge myself. I couldn't go with her. She was like over two hours away from me. They should have been so, able to transfer you together, surely. That's I know, really... and this is what we said. Why yeah. can't... It's because King's College is a better hospital yeah, as well. Yeah, they can treat so, you there, surely. They... Exactly. So we tried this, but no. We tried for about a day to get me transferred over to King's. And wasn't possible. So over then two days, Lilia was getting contrast done. So to see how her flow was going through to her bowels and things like that. Because they was really worried about it. Mm. So luckily enough, after two days, she was brought back to me. That feeling when your baby is brought back. It's just like we're giving birth all over again. Yeah. Oh, it's horrible. Did it's you, not- like, notice random question did you notice that like a smell like the pheromones from her head like when you had her back did you have this overwhelming like just the smell of her There's yeah a reason I'm she's got that baby smell yeah you know, she has not got rid of it when you smell her now like yeah. i bath her now and things like that with all different potions and lotions and she still yeah. smells has that, that... Day. I, i'm <laughs> certain there's um because like babies have that anyway and it's like a thing about um they release these pheromones to create a, a smell that is attractive to the mother in in really? wildlife do this because it's to stop a, a, the mums abandoning the young in in the wild not humans oh well, i've never heard of that yeah yeah so it's actually a thing but I am curious as to whether that is heightened when a mum and baby are separated. Because when my son was in neonatal um, initially, I had this and I noticed that smell overwhelmingly strong with him. 
more so than my daughter who was with me the whole time and we were out by you know the same day and so like there was a enhanced level of this like pheromone release and I wonder yeah. if it is part of that because it's like it, it is, connects just, you <laughs> yeah when she was away from me for two days the yeah. day she left so she was sick over like a white baby grow oh actually green it was awful but I slept with that for the two days because that was the last thing she wore yeah it's the last thing that had her smell on it even though my mum's like no it's got sick on it and I was like I don't care yeah. I just had it on my chest it was honestly I had to smell her because I yeah. could not was the worst two days of my life by far um so yeah I just felt like I needed something to yeah. be able to sense that she was here basically so yeah it was not did nice. they get to the bottom of what was going on with her no so they literally just think it was because Lily has suffered with constipation since she was born yeah so she poor son she hasn't had it easy at all so she's where she suffered from the constipation they was worried that it came up the other way as well but they think it was literally just because she was constipated and she was just getting a little bit blocked where yeah. she was frustrated so I think and that was literally the only bit of sick that she had the green sick so it's like um it's like biofluid like you know like the lining of your stomach basically so yeah, yeah but they, they thank god there's nothing wrong and because yeah. Yeah, I think that was the worrying thing that something was twisted or there was a blockage there yeah. because that can obviously cause much more complications but yeah yeah, she's been perfect. She's my little white rain now. <laughs> oh, well, it's good that it was all checked, even though it was horrible for you being away from her, but knowing that she... I feel like know. she had full MOT. Being yeah. at Kingswell, I know they're such a good hospital. Yeah. And being there, I was like, she's actually in the best place possible. Yeah. So she had a full MOT. She had from head to toe check up. So yeah. to be there, I'm actually quite thankful she went there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And now you, you're, yeah, you're just going to appreciate everything even more every yeah. second that you're with her so I went away yesterday so yesterday was my first day back like proper fashion shooting and I had to go up to Liverpool and I don't think I've ever been away from her for more than an hour oh. something like that and oh my god the whole day felt like it dragged yeah. and it was so funny because my manager was saying to me you're swaying and I was I was doing the sway yes. but with the suitcase it's like the mummy sway they yeah. call it isn't it yeah I'm standing there like this so I feel like I'm constantly swaying yeah. or bumping now because I feel like she's here you'll do that for years <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh well you know like it's I think it's so good sharing this and I think it's really important as well because every you know story is really really unique and yeah. there are as we said before so many twists and turns that can that can happen and whilst obviously we wouldn't want to scare anybody I think it's preparation isn't it and if you are aware that things can happen like you and I've both been in positions where we've had a form shoved at us to sign when we're not in a sound mind to sign it and it's like you don't know what the risks are you don't know what you're signing away and you, yeah. you just have to trust but actually we could all like be told a bit more about possibilities and just like if this happened this yeah. is what would be presented to you and okay. these are the risks and these are the choices just to give us a little bit more of a because I think that we're kind of just okay great brilliant let's go um with a very much it'll be fine attitude but it'd be really good I think to be a bit more prepared for the various eventualities so yeah. that we can almost in advance make some decisions of like well if this were to happen this is what I would want and this would be yeah. plan a and this would be plan b yeah. yeah definitely I think the birthing plan you sort of need to scrap what you want and what will may happen yeah but like I said you do need to be prepared for if something does go wrong because it happens way too often yeah and I mean my I ended up having only one bub patch I didn't have the second done because they basically said to me, if you have the second one, it is a risk that you could be paralysed or something bad could happen. You can have a blood clot in the brain. And even still to this day, I think that's going to be in my mind because it forms the, the, um, the, in the brain, if there's too much fluid in the brain, it happens over a certain amount of time. So even in six months time, I could find out something's wrong, you know? So I feel like it's always in the back of your mind. Something mm. could still go wrong with you. So mm. I feel like you're never out the loop really, but yeah. it is, I think girls do really need to sit and think how and what they want. But honestly, I think if I had another one, I'd go in for elective C-section. Yeah. You know what you're getting. You have a day, even when she's coming out. I think that is the way to go. But even still, you have an epidural. So... 
I think the epidurals really need to be analysed and more information needs to come out about them because it wasn't nice my birth at all. I'm mm. not going to lie to anyone and say it was perfect, but mm. I got something perfect out of it. The end but, result, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that could, that could have totally changed, you know, so... Yeah. Yeah. It does need to be spoken about more. It does, it does. And in all honesty, how many of us I know out there listening would say that they've had an epidural without really even knowing what it is, quite yeah. honestly? Like, I've had a spinal and an epidural, and to be honest, I didn't know at the time what the difference even was. Or that See, when I, I first thought they were basically the same, same but thing. they're not. So, yeah, yeah exactly. There's not enough information about that. And, like, I think, yes, it's up to us individually to seek that information and to take ownership of that but we're given I guess mainstream there's okay there's NCT I didn't do any of that I did the birthing but it's not as we go through our sort of like the GP practice and just what you get given and these packs of information there could there could be a bit more guidance I think Mm, definitely I was having to ask people because no one was telling me about anything I didn't even get an appointment with a midwife to say this is what's going to happen or yeah. like what you want to do they just say what's your birthing plan I'm just like I don't know I've never had a baby before and yeah. I have no clue what I want so I, I yeah. feel like you do have to ask and I think that's the best thing is to ask if you're worried or you don't know about something always ask because if you don't there you go they're gonna say well you didn't ask you didn't you didn't tell us so yeah. don't wait that. to be told I think is the message isn't it go out there and find yeah. the answers you need and get yourself educated on this stuff that we don't know about why yeah. would we That's you don't know until we need to know right so. yeah it happens when you're having a baby so yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, that's so that's so helpful, actually, and insightful. And tell me a bit about then how how are things going with sleep? Obviously, that being my topic, I'm in, I'm keen to know. Like, how are you doing? How is Lilia doing? It's early days, I know. But... Yeah, so she is. I can't believe she's seven weeks now. She's going to be seven weeks on Friday. Eight weeks on Friday. Wow. I cannot believe. Like people were saying to me, "Oh, honestly, like cherish this time. It goes so quick." I didn't think you'd go this quick. I cannot believe she's going to be eight weeks on Friday. And, I, and they say, don't they, after eight weeks, they're not a newborn anymore. They're like, they're two months. So it's like, oh. it's just trying to get older. And it's just, she's just changing every single day. Like, yeah. It's about every day. And I'm like, oh, my God, this wasn't here. Or this has changed. Or honestly, I just I just can't believe it. It is shocking. But yeah, my sleeping at the moment, I feel like since Lilia has been born, I've yeah. been running on adrenaline. Yep. So, I, even my mum said the other day, you're taking care of Lilia, but you need to take care of yourself because yeah. you're not taking care of yourself. And I'm a bit like, oh, whatever. If she's fine, whatever. So I feel like at the moment, her sleep is very up and down. The other day, she slept like seven hours and didn't wake up. And I was like, mum, wow. you her? Like, what's wrong? And she was like, no, I'm like, and this is what I mean. People, so you hear all different things. If they're sleeping too much, wake them. And then other people don't wake their children until they want to be woken up or if they wake up themselves, obviously. So I I obviously didn't wake up and she's absolutely fine. Like she's some, fine. some days she sleeps like over, yeah, about seven hours. That's I think that's great. how long it is, seven hours. And I'm like, yeah. that's lovely. I yeah. get a little Take it. <laughs> But to be fair, look, she is obviously newborn. And I feel like it's really hard to get into a routine without this young. Yeah. But I'm trying to put in a routine in place already, like bath at eight o'clock and then a bottle and then try and put her down. So I'll yeah. put her down maybe about half nine, ten. Yeah. And to be fair, she's having about one feed at night. So I don't think that's too bad. She's, she was every two, three hours. And yeah. to be fair, she is a very greedy baby. Very greedy. She's on five ounces every like two to three hours during the day as well. She's very hungry all the time. Yeah. So, and even midwives say then like, well, you can feed them when you want or w- wake them up after two two hours if they're not waking up. I'm just like, well, I'm just gonna let her tell me when she's yeah. hungry. Or like always listen to the baby. If she's hungry, yeah. she will tell me. And she's and it sounds definitely like she made her aware. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's great. And yeah, and this kind of the theory behind that, like waking them up. Or waking them up to feed them i in my advice would always be there is sometimes a reason to do that but know what the reason is like if yeah. you've got a reason if you don't have a reason in that you know lilia is sleeping um that length of time she's waking yeah. up happy she's feeding perfectly well she's following a healthy growth curve there isn't any need you know in the early weeks if they are if there's any jaundice or yeah. if they're having a difficult time taking on enough calories there can be cause for Oh, oh, you know, waking them up to, to feed them and stuff like that. But 
Yeah, definitely. I think there's no need to. She's a lot throughout the day as well. Like, yeah. say if she's yeah. sleeping seven hours consecutively, then I'd get a bit worried. But it's not. It's literally once in a blue moon. And that's I a think, long stretch. So recently, she's actually been quite ill. So we should, we've been, I've been up and down the hospital with her because as soon as something like I get an inkling of something, that's it. Hospital. I'm straight up there. I am. I am a worrying mum. I am. So I just take her straight up there, and she's actually had a little bit of a cold, and so she had green poo last week and i think i've got like ptsd so i think oh my god green sick green poo like yeah hospital my anxiety just went crazy so i took her straight up there but they said she was fine they think she's got like a bit of a cold and a bit of a neurovirus going on at the moment so that wasn't nice for her bless her so i feel like she needed that sleep to revive herself so yeah when they 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 obviously do need it they need it and that's the other thing to always ask yourself if you know baby's sleeping or even when she's a bit older you know when little one's sleeping like probably they're sleeping because they need the sleep because they're tired because they're yeah yeah, we all do we sleep more when we're we're under the weather um so yeah it doesn't sound like you've got anything to worry about but definitely you want to look after yourself too as mums we do troop don't we and we go like as long as they're okay we put ourselves last but you you know in fact my daughter's very good at saying this because she you know she's now 11 and a half but she will say you need to look after you because that's how you look after us and I'm like yeah good good that she sees that yeah so looking after ourselves is absolutely key to be in a good position to look after our little one so yeah really important that you you don't look after yourself then the baby can't get what she needs exactly you do come first definitely and I love that she's with us now she's just so gorgeous (laughs) so gorgeous so, nice. <laughs> so content as well isn't she she is. do you know what she's actually a really good baby so if she cries it's either she's in pain or yeah. she is hungry or she needs a, a, a nappy chain so she does tell me what she wants but she's yeah. not she doesn't whinge like she she really doesn't i feel like at the moment she i think she's got colic so it starts around six seven o'clock in the evening yeah which is not nice is it you give the everyone a smile yo. but it's like seeing her like just smile and stuff in the morning she's such a happy baby in the mornings and I'm like I wish I was like that (laughs) but that it will be it will be partly because of you though because I think if we're chilled they're chilled if we're calm they're calm and they really pick up on that don't they they can pick up on any like animosity I think and anything going on around yeah yeah, definitely I think you can can't you because then you get stressed out oh and like so how like you've done so well honestly Bo you have done so well like you've been through a challenging experience you've got the absolute gorgeous baby at the other side of all of that you've also done a lot of this on your own haven't you as well Um, (laughs) (laughs) smiling everyone she's gonna smile now she's gonna give us a smile (laughs) and yeah been tough yeah it has but look at you you know you're there like looking gorgeous smiling still through it and you know amazing baby with you too um what what would be your sort of like any closing message to our listeners if there was one thing you would say like if there's one thing you take away from today what would you want people to take away i mean i've got a couple i think yeah I think it's definitely about the epidural. Just make yeah. sure you know the outcomes and the aftermath and if things can go wrong because you need to take into account that it does. Yeah. Because like me and you, we, yeah. we've had that experience of it going wrong and it yeah. was not nice. Not being able to look after Lilia for the week after and even still now when I'm bleeding over the backache and the headaches, yeah. I even still get because of it. Yeah. It's not nice. But obviously... Because she's here perfect, you do overlook it. You do. But in the same sense, you really need to think about what you're having. And if you're going to be under perfidine, don't sign anything. Don't sign a consent form. Because mine went wrong. And still, it's just a bit like, well, what do I do now then? So Mm. it is. It's a really tricky one. But as well, I think um, a note to single mums out there as well, because I am now a single mum. So you, you can do it. I didn't think I'd be able to do it. I really didn't. But the past few weeks, I've been getting back to myself, and I think I'm quite. I'm actually quite proud of myself. How and Should I've be. never been proud of myself, but I'm actually quite proud of myself how I've adjusted to mum life as well. And 
I've not got frustrated with her or I've not thought to myself, I can't do it. And I mean, don't get me wrong, I have some days when I'm so low and I think to myself, I actually don't think I can do it on my own. But you can. If you have the right support system around you to lift you up, and I mean the best support system is you isn't it she keeps me going every day and yeah. it is it's, it's just the different kind of love you get it is crazy isn't it the, the love for a child you get you just no love like the other yeah. but yeah say so single mums as well you can do it you can do it you can do it all you absolutely can we were built to women rule the world exactly, <laughs> exactly. they do rule the world <laughs> Oh, Bo, it's been such a pleasure to talk with you today. And thank you for being so, like, transparent with everything and just so real and sharing, you know, your real story. Because I think it's, um, it, there's lots of valuable lessons in that. And it's really, yeah, really, really. I think I want my, like my, my Instagram is very transparent place. So I'm yeah. very transparent with everyone. Yeah. And I think people like that because... Yeah. I'm not I'm not going to tell someone the wrong thing or say that something's fine when it's really not. So, yeah, make my Instagram a safe place. Some, my Instagram is my DMs are always open to mums. And I actually have, have a few messages from mums per day asking about experiences or yeah. even how I'm doing, how Lillian's doing. And it's yeah. really nice. So I like my Instagram to be a safe place for mums as well as I am a fashion mum as well. But if, if people want to know <laughs> where hats and stuff yeah definitely if, if people are worried about anything or if they're having yeah. the same complication as me i'm my messages are always open to any mum go and drop oh, a message if you want to find out more what's your can we share your handle for people to um... yeah it is underscore o raymond underscore perfect and we'll put that in the show notes as well but there you go everyone you can go and and check out more about Bo and Lilia see how she's progressing um over on her Instagram once again Bo thank you so much for joining us today thank you for having me it's been lovely to actually open up and have a chat about things good for you so proud (laughs) of you lovely thank you